former Prime Minister Imran Khan and former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi, who have now been under unjust incarceration for 251 and 232 days respectively, were not allowed to offer congregational Eid prayers by the Adiala jail authorities, contrary to media reports attributed to these jail authorities. Mrs. Bushra Khan, the former First Lady who has been incarcerated now for 73 days for political vengeance, was not allowed to meet her family at Eid. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan sent a message to his nation on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, saying the illegitimate power-holding clique in Pakistan today has set aside all fundamental teachings of Islam, ethics, morality and the law. He added that Hakiki Azadi is the destiny of this nation and it cannot be delayed by any force, oppression or coercion. Mr. Khan ended his message with prayers for the people of Gaza who are facing genocide as well as for the Kashmiri people who are struggling against the ruthless Indian occupation forces. Protest rallies from all over Pakistan were seen on the eve of the Islamic festival of Eid al-Fitr at the conclusion of the holy month of Ramadan. The nation demands that their jailed leader Imran Khan along with other leaders, supporters and members of the Pakistan tehreek e insaf who are mere victims of political vengeance be immediately released. Meanwhile, heartfelt and touching messages of support, admiration, devotion and regard for Imran Khan are pouring in as Eid cards and letters for him are being sent to Diyala jail where he is unjustly imprisoned. Pakistan's leading English newspaper, The Dawn, reported on Thursday that the Asian Development Bank stated that Pakistan's economic outlook was uncertain, with high risks on the downside, as political uncertainty would remain a key risk to the sustainability of stabilization and reform efforts. Two years after the regime change of April 2022, when Prime Minister Imran Khan's government was toppled through a conspiracy, the theme is the same. There can be no economic stability if there is no political stability in the country. Gaza's health ministry has said at least 63 Palestinians have been killed and 45 injured in Israeli attacks across the enclave in the past 24 hours. Meanwhile, U.S. aid Samantha Power is the first U.S. official to publicly acknowledge that famine is happening in northern Gaza after she said that she agreed with the U.N.-backed assessment of hunger in the enclave. At least 33,545 Palestinians have been killed in the last six months of death and destruction by the Israeli forces in Gaza. And particularly northern Gaza are already experiencing famine. The methodology that the IPC used is one that we had our experts scrub. It's one that's relied upon in other settings, and that is their assessment. And, and we believe that assessment is credible. Uh, so.